We are God's creations, each of us crafted for a purpose. We begin our journey as dreamers in a world filled with possibility. Nothing seems impossible. Although we have faced a global pandemic like no other, God's purpose for our life has not changed. Let's together restore what was diminished and fully live out our purpose. It's time to dream again. Well, good morning. Welcome, Vineyard Church. If you're joining us online, so glad that you're here with us as we begin a new series that I'm very excited about, Time to Dream Again. You know, uh, we all go, that's part of life, going through times when your life shifts drastically, a dream you're pursuing gets uh, sidelined or maybe just dies Certainly this last year, we've all kind of, if you've been going through a challenging season with uh, not having a compelling dream in your life, everybody's pretty much joined uh, with you uh, this last year uh, to some degree or another. I had some dreams that, uh, that got side rail. One of them was we were going to, my mom's getting older and we were all going to get together. My family lives in different parts of the country. We were all going to fly uh, together and spend uh, a week with my mom. And, uh, and then COVID came. Well, things have changed now. Obviously that, that was canceled. And now it looks like we won't ever be able to do that again. So, I mean, things change, right? I mean, w- things that we had hoped for, things we were, people wanting, you know, to go to a particular school or with their job or, you know, with, with something in their life they were pursuing. Uh, many times things get derailed. What happens? What do we do? What's our response when that happens? Well, the response is it's time to dream again. And that's easier said than done. It's one thing just to say it and declare it. It's another thing to get fired up and impassioned and start to live that out again. But that is what I want to do with you over the next three weeks as we go through uh, uh, this season of Lent going towards Easter, which is really all about having another great dream. And we're going to certainly go right into Easter with this. Here's some goals, though, that I have that I'm inviting all of us, whether you're online or whether you're here, for us to join together when we're going to pursue dreaming again. First of all, you've got to realize it is about your future. You're preparing for your future so that you don't waste it. You see, by having a dream, a compelling dream, you're more likely to optimize your energy and your time. It, it pulls you towards that. It draws you to that. And really, that's where you're going to live anyways is in your future. You don't want to live in the past. That's gone. And the present, well, that was a minute ago. <laughs> you know, that, that's behind you too. All you have to do is wait a, a second or two and boom, that's in the past. Really, you're, you're going to live your life in the future. That can and certainly should be good news for you. But that's where you want to live your life. It says God has made us what we are. He has created us for a life of good deeds, which he has already prepared for us to do. Now, while it's the future for us, God God planned out the uh, the way he wants us to live out our lives. Some of the great deeds, some of the great dreams, way, way long ago before you were even born. God's been thinking, it's not like he's just, you know, figuring it out on the fly. You know, and then we make a dumb decision. He goes, whoa, that changes everything. Shoot, you know, what am I going to do now? No, God already, he thought about it years and years ago. And then you were created to fulfill that dream. Secondly, prepare us for a future together as a church family. The goals, the dreams you have for your life, if they're not including something bigger than just you, they're too small. It's not everything God has for you. And so we do stuff together. You know, if you have one drop of rain, it can't do a lot. But a million drops of rain can change a desert into a garden. And God wants us to make an impact in this world. Together is how we're going to do it. And that's really a God dream. He says, together you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is an important part of it. So I'm not the body of Christ, you are not the body of Christ, but together we're the body of Christ and we can make an impact. 
So help each other. So we looked at preparing your future. We also do this together. Help each other discover our unique role and contribution. You see, your life is not about just living and consuming resources. And we can fall into that, especially where we live in a land of abundance. And so we just think it's all about, you know, what's our next vacation? What's our next thing I can buy? And it's all about consuming, using resources, looking, you know, eventually we retire and then we die. Listen, it's more than that. You have a vital peace to play in the unfolding of God's plan in humanity for this generation. And don't get all caught up in this world or you'll miss it. God says he's giving you specific gifts to make that contribution. It's like a jigsaw. It's like, you know, a puzzle. When you have one of those jigsaw puzzles and you, you know, if you're missing a piece, you end up, you know, every time you look at that, if you leave it up, you just look at the piece that's missing. Think, oh, what happened to that piece? And if you don't do what God's called you to do, the world gets cheated. They need you. The world needs what you've got. And in fact, it's true within the, own, within the body of Christ. If you don't do what God's calling you to do, following your dream, using your gifts, then I'm the one who gets cheated and vice versa. If I don't use my gifts, you get cheated. We need each other. You are the body of the anointed one and each of you is a unique and vital part of it. You play an important role. That's why we do Growth Trek. We talk a lot about it here. Today starts step one. We always do step one the first of the first weekend of the month. And we talk about this very subject, about that God has given you a unique and vital gift that he wants you to put into action. He wants you to use. And we want to help we want to help stir that gift. We want to help get you involved so you're using it and, ma- and fulfilling the dream that God has for you. And then lastly, prepare us to support each other in doing God's plan. God has designed all along that we do ministry together. We do this thing together. It's not a solo ride. When God created Adam, he, he says, hey, he's alone. That's not good. God hates loneliness. He doesn't want you to try to do life all by yourself. He wants you to do it together. That's why we believe in the church family and having a, you know, being in a small group and the power of that. If you don't have a physical family, God has given you the church family, which is a family, that, by the way, that you will be with with eternity. And we're supposed to do our mission together with a church family. Now, I know COVID in particular has given the rise to the internet church. We are, we were doing online services for, for years, way before COVID came. But with COVID, a lot of people, because they're concerned about their health, and I get that. No, I mean, I, you know, we're all kind of in this together. So a lot of people who have not been vaccinated are on the internet. Again, I'm so thankful that we we're prepared for that. I think we have a great online service, and we're, we have some ways of interacting, minimal, but some ways of interacting. But there's a number of people that are looking that study like they're prognosticators, and they look at the, they're going, oh, you know what, this is going to be the wave of the future. There's going to be a lot of people that even when the mask restrictions are gone, uh, even when the vaccine, everyone's, you know, 80% or whatever are vaccinated, all those kinds of things, herd immunity. They're saying, oh, a lot of people, they're just not going to come back. They're going to just stay in their home and do internet church. I'm telling you, this is not the best way of doing life. It's not the, it's not the way that uh, God designed it because he doesn't like people isolated. Satan likes people isolated. Yeah, no doubt about that. Satan loves it. If we can all get all isolated, if we're divisive, that's even better. If there's strife thrown in there, that's great. That's Satan's things. God wants us together. And there's something powerful when you are in person with something. There's an exchange that happens. There's something that there's, 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 uh, there's power released. I mean, if you've ever taken, if you've ever been to like the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls, and then you see a picture later, you go, ah, it's not the same as the experience. Listen, I'm telling you, internet church is not the same as being in person when the Lord comes and the Lord visits and there's some powerful things happen. But also we encourage one another. God does not like loneliness. He says, I mean, 
that I want us to help each other with the faith we have. Your faith will help me. My faith will help you. How does that happen? When we are together. It's really hard to happen when we're isolated in our own homes and there's, very, there's little or no connection. So if we're going to be talking about dreams over the next three weeks, which I want to do, and I want you to be praying about the dream God has for you and reinvigorating the dream, getting greater clarity on the dream you already have, let's talk about what that dream, what we're talking about. What is a dream? Well, Obviously, when we sleep, we dream, right? We dream. And those, so that is certainly one definition of a dream, thoughts and images while you're sleeping. But that's, those aren't always good, and they're not always God. You know, sometimes they're nightmares, right? Sometimes, I mean, just because you're dreaming doesn't mean that you need to follow that. You don't wake up and go, oh, I need to do that. Sometimes, but it's pretty rare, actually. The, another way that we uh, uh, do dreams, here it is, Desires and ambitions while we're awake. Now listen, these are important. The desires and your ambitions while you're awake are way more important. What the the dreams you have when your eyes are open are way more important than the dreams that you have when your eyes are closed. And and 99% of the time, the dreams that you have when your eyes are closed, you can really ignore. These you don't want to ignore. I've always wanted to do this. I've always dreamed of that. I've always hoped this could happen. Those are important. And those are really, God God does something in you to have you even want to dream like that. But here, there's another type of dream that's even more important. And that's goals and plans God created you to fulfill. We just looked at that. That he planned in advance for you to do. Those, I submit to you, are way more important than your own dreams. Like I had a dream when I was in high school. I was a, you know, I played the electric guitar. I thought, oh man, I want to be a rock star. Shred the guitar. That's not necessarily a good dream. That wasn't God's dream for me. That was just my own dream. And so, and God doesn't doesn't promise to bless every one of our own dreams. Just because you come up with a goal, just because you come up with a dream, uh, doesn't mean that it's that it's God. You know, sometimes, and you, many of you have experienced this. You thought when you were younger, you know, you saw somebody you thought was hot. Oh, man, I'd love to marry her. Love, oh, I wish I married him. And then later on, you think, that would have been dumb. You know, if I had gotten married to that person, that would have been, I, you know, that would have been stupid. And uh, so we don't want to follow every dream, every goal that we have. They're not all important, right? And so we, but God's plans and dreams for us are important. So what are God's dreams? How do they look? What do they look like? Well, there's some characteristics that we need to know when it comes to God's dreams for us. Well, number one is is God's dreams are good, are good. Satan would love to tempt you and and me and say God's dream for you is bad, is bad. He wants to, and that's, this is one of the temptations that, that happened to Jesus when he was being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. One of them was Satan said, God has bad and evil intentions for you. They're not good. And he had to fight off Satan with Scripture saying, no, I know God is good. God has good plans for me. And that is true for you. God's plans for you, his dreams for you are good. I know what I have planned for you, says the Lord. I have good plans. You can change that word out for dreams. The dreams he has for you, he goes, they're good dreams. You can, if you follow those it will be the greatest sense of fulfillment you'll ever have on this life, in this life. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and a good future. He goes, it's going to be something wonderful. It's going to be something great. God's not out to, to hurt you and to harass you. And so this is the first thing that, to know, hey, what God has for me, it's good. Number two, God's dream for your life is far bigger than your dream. We always set a smaller dream than God has for us. Always. It's one of the, one of the hallmarks of a God dream. It's without God coming through, it's not going to happen. It causes us to be nervous, maybe a little afraid. You know, we're scared. Wow, this, if, if this doesn't happen, if God doesn't show up, I'm going to embarrass myself. I'll fall flat on, flat on my face. I mean, th- this can cause us to be a little unnerved, but it's bigger Notice, it says God can do anything far more than you could ever 
imagine. He's talking about dreams. He said, you think of your dream, <clears throat> double it, triple it. God does something way bigger. Or guess, our request, or dream in your wildest dreams. God does this not by pushing us around. He's not a taskmaster whipping us saying, hey, get going. He draws it out of us because we were made to do that. And it's something bigger than we normally would do on our own. And then God arranges the circumstances to make it happen. God orchestrates it. I mean, you meet people you, you know, never thought you'd meet and just it all kind of comes together and the money's there when you need it. And sometimes it's the, little, the 11th hour. But God orchestrates it. He's so good at that. Look at what Jesus says. He goes, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. See, God orchestrates it, opens up the door, but guess who has to walk through that door? That's you. And that's the hardest part. That's one of the hardest parts is for us to say, I'm going to walk through. I mean, we get gripped with fear and there's no guarantees that the dream will happen just because God has orchestrated it all. If you don't walk through the door, it doesn't happen. That dream doesn't get fulfilled. You think of, if you know the story in the Old Testament with Joseph has that dream, gets him, you know, because of the jealousy of his brothers, gets him, you know, put into slavery and then ultimately into prison because he's falsely accused. I mean, he's in a bad place. God opens the door for him. Pharaoh has a dream. They know that he has the ability to interpret. He ends up in front of Pharaoh. He has that gift. He interprets the dream. Pharaoh goes, that's pretty solid. What do we do now? Well, he only had the gift of interpretation of dreams. Was he a master national strategist? Did he have tactical skills? Well, not, we don't know if he had the gifts, but he certainly was able to do that. But he had to walk through that door. When Pharaoh said, what do we do? You interpreted the dream. I believe you now. What's next? Now, if he got that wrong, uh, it would be you know humiliation big time. Maybe death. I don't know. But he had to walk through the door. And that is also a thing that can keep us from from experiencing God's dreams for us. So from now to Easter, we're going to be talking about God's purpose in your life. And that, that is where you build your dreams out of. Your purpose that God has for you is that you would know him, that you would love him, that you would serve him, that you would share your faith with others, that you would uh, love his family. Now, the dreams often through different seasons of life, they, they change. Our purpose will never change. The, the dreams that God gives us, they change. And so God wants you to dream again. He does. He wants you to dream again, regardless of where you're at, to pour some, some, some gasoline on that fire and let that thing start to rage again. Reasons I must know God's dream for my life. Well, God gave me the capacity to dream. You know, animals don't have the capacity to dream. A cow doesn't think of the future. A snail doesn't think of a future. A dog doesn't think about its retirement. I mean, it doesn't think of the future. It has, those animals have instincts. But only God gave us the ability to dream, to think of the future. And that's because we're, he made us in his image. We're like him in that way. Let us make human beings in our image and likeness. And so you were made in the likeness of your creator. Every time you create, every time you dream, you're like your create, creator in that way. You know, I'm not all that creative. No, that you're, you're made in the likeness of the creator. And so you're supposed to create. Sometimes I think it just gets beaten out of us as kids. Kids tend to be real creative. If you've worked with kids and you maybe you remember being a kid early, early on, we're very creative, but then we teach kids not to be creative. Oh, yeah, don't, don't do that. Color in the lines, you know. <laughs> no, this is how you play that. You can't add rules. You can't do it. No, you play. And we teach them all about boundaries and rules. Next thing you know, they're not creative anymore. But our, the way we were designed, we're meant to be creative. God gave you the ability to dream, and he wants you to dream great dreams. Without a dream, I'm dying. We actually start to die within ourselves if we don't follow the dream. You can die before you die if you don't have a dream you're, that's causing you to live. The Bible says, where there is no vision, it's talking about dreams there. If you don't have a dream, 
the people perish. I tell other pastors, I say, where there's no vision, people will find another parish. Because a church needs a dream too. I mean, we, we, we should be a collection of dreamers. If nothing else, I would love in your church to be known as a place where they believe God for great things. I don't know about that church over there. They just, I mean, they think God can do anything. Can you believe that? You know, go there and you never know what you're going to, you know, what's going to happen. And so we want to rev up the dream machine in each one of us so we don't start dying prematurely because we stopped dreaming. Everything starts with a dream. Everything starts with a dream. When God created the earth, every tree began with a dream. Yeah, I want a tree. Every mountain that God created, it began with a dream. When he created the earth, when he created the universe, and that's true with us. When we create a piece of art or a, a piece of music or a skyscraper, anything, a, a business, it begins with a dream. Somebody took the time and dreamed it up first. Then it become, became reality. Einstein said this, imagination is more important than knowledge. Now, he's a pretty smart dude. So, I mean, he's laying it down with that statement. But if you've read any of his biographies and you know about Einstein, you know that's true. I mean, he cre some of his greatest uh, equations and, 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 and thought, they were, he called them thought experiments. They were, they were, and he would just dream. Like when he came up with special relativity, he just was doing this thought experiment, this dream of what if I could run as fast as the speed of light? What would light look like? And that, that launched him into special relativity. And I mean, it wasn't his math skills. Most of Einstein's equations could be solved with high school math. It was his capacity to dream. His capacity, he would take time. Many times people would walk in on Einstein, he's just sitting there in his chair. Aren't you working? Yep. I'm dreaming. So often we see that as just being lazy. Hey, why don't you, you know, pick up a shovel. You got something to do, right? Pick up a, you know, you go to work. But that's because we undervalue the power of our capacity to dream. It says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future that God has called you to share. How are you going to be able to see something of the future if you don't take the time to dream? God, what do you want me to do? What am I supposed to bring to my generation? How do I share what you've given me? Now, the world thinks that their talents, their gifts, their skills are all about serving themselves. But God says, no, we're, we're called to share what God's given us to the pastor. And one of the things I love about dreaming is, you know, it doesn't cost anything. You can dream for free. Just all you need is, you know, your, your, your capacity, your willingness, your faith. God, what are you going to do through me? And as your pastor, I am praying for you, especially over these next three weeks, that God will, will ignite something in your soul that will cause you to want to live again, particularly those of you who have lost your dream. Number four, dream show what God wants to do through me. God does something through me when I have a dream. Years ago, God gave me a dream for this church. I was only 25 years old when I got, the, when I, when I got a dream. I wrote it all down. I thought, why? You know, and hey, God, you're showing me this. I wasn't sure at the time, you know what I mean? But I kind of sensed God was moving me in this direction. I didn't have the skill sets that I, that I needed to make it all happen. But God was going to grow me in this, in this way. And, and I didn't know all the steps, but I, he would show me the next step. And then when I would take that step, he'd show me the next step. I, don't think he, I think he knew if he showed it all to me, I'd go, whoa, that's overwhelming. Don't know if I can do that, God. Sorry, count me out. It's almost like a scroll, you know, the, the scroll where you just, you can only read a few lines. And then you kind of scroll it down. You can read a few more lines. You scroll it down. That's often how dreams are revealed to us by God. I mean, he gives us the dream, but as far as the steps and the way we're supposed to go, and God gives even people that are far from him, he'll give them dreams. He did that with Pharaoh. I told you earlier about that story with Joseph and Pharaoh. Joseph had the ability to interpret dreams. 
So he interprets this as his dream. He goes, because Pharaoh had gotten the same dream multiple times. He goes, the repetition of your dream means that the matter is fixed by God and that he will make it happen through you. It's going to happen soon and through you. And he interprets it. He says, you're going to have in this country, uh, which really was one of the largest, I mean, it had the most influence at the time of, in the, of any country in the world, Egypt. He goes, you're going to have seven years of plenty, and then you're going to have seven years of famine. And then he gives them a strategic and tactical way to approach that problem. But God gave him, he goes, through you, through you, through a person, impacts other people. That's how dreams work. My dreams define me. It's true because when I first, when I get a dream, then I know how I'm supposed to live out my life. That's why it's so important to have a clear dream in your life. That's why there's so many people with identity crisis going on in our, in our culture and in our country. They don't know who they are. They, I mean, they don't, they're clueless. They, well, I don't know where I came from. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how I'm supposed to get there. I don't know if there's any meaning in my life. I don't know how to make a difference with my life. And they just are wandering. And so God wants to give you clear, a clear dream. If you don't have a good dream for your life and you've anchored it to something that's, that's faulty or, or, or won't support really what God has for your life, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause you to, to run amok and go all over. You, you'll never really have an anchor. God has a dream for you. For you, if you're a dad, he's got a dream for you. If you're a wife, he's got a dream for you. If you're uh, a businesswoman, he's got a dream for you. A businessman, he's got a dream for you. If you're a parent, he's got a dream for you. And, and, and you got to know what God's dream is. Otherwise, you'll just kind of read a few books and download some blogs and just kind of try to figure it out as you go. That's speculation. Better than speculation is revelation. When God says, this is why I made you. This is how I want you to live out your life. And so we shape our dreams, but then our dreams ultimately shape us. Notice what Jesus said. He says, your eyes are windows into your body. So he's talking about this ability to see, this vision, this clarity. He goes, if you open your eyes, see, if you have a vision for your life that's, that's, that's right, that's, that, he says, that's filled with wonder and belief. He goes, it's going to affect you. Your body will be filled with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, in other words, less than what God has for you. He goes, then that's going to affect you as well. A, a big dream, a great dream, you're going to be filled with light. It's going to get you up in the morning. It's going to fire you up. It'll live, your life will be filled with passion. He goes, if you have a little dream, you're, you're just going to have, you're going to live in a musty cellar. I love that translation. I mean, you just, you're just going to live in a, it's smaller than what God has for you. And then if you pull the blinds over your windows, you're going to live in darkness. So there's, there's three levels. There's, God, there, there's God's dream for your life. There's, there's just small-minded thinking where you don't have a dream or it's a small dream. And then there's evil dreams, obviously. He goes, that's, you'll just live in darkness if you're in that place. God has a vision for your life. He goes, I want you to live where your body is filled with light. And then number six, last one, a dream keeps me growing. You need to develop skills to fulfill your dream. Just because God gives you a dream and gifts and to help that, you still need to refine those. You still need to educate yourself. You're st- I've been on a learning curve for decades as God continues, like that scroll I was telling you about. As he unfolds more and more, I realize, oh, God has that for me. Oh, God, I, better, I better get some skills. I better grow in that area. I need to grow in this area because God has a great dream for you, bigger than you can do today. And he wants to, unfo- he wants to fulfill that. Over the years, I've, I like reading biographies. I've read, an, I've read hundreds, really, of biographies over the years of, from great people. But really, you know what? The more I read biographies, the more I realize there are no great people. There's only, great, there's only people with great dreams. I mean, people, they get attached to a great dream and, and it just pulls it out of them. And they become, you know, they, they just become what, they, what they've been dreaming about. God has a dream for you. 
you know, there's so many things that we really can't control. Some of the most important things in our lives are really out of our control anyways. You didn't control where you'd be born. You didn't control when you'd be born. You didn't control who you, your parents would be. You didn't control your race. You didn't control your gender. There's many, many things that we don't have control over. But here's something you have 100% control over. How much you'll believe God for. That is, that is, that, that ball is in your court. 100% control. I'm going to trust God for that. I'm going to believe him for that. I'm going to let God's dream become my dream and not let fear keep me from living out what God has for me. And this is a, a, uh, a progression for all of us. We're on this pilgrimage, if you were. We're on this journey, and we're all on it. Paul was on it. Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, I mean, he, I mean, he was a pretty solid Christ follower. And yet he says of himself, he was, still, he was still learning. He was still growing. He said, I know that I am not yet what God wants me to be. Now, Paul can say that. I think we can say that. I'm not there yet. We're not talking about being perfect. We're talking about l- moving towards the dream that God has for you. He goes, I haven't reached that goal. You could say dream. He goes, I haven't reached my dream for my life. He goes, but I keep moving towards it to make it mine because Christ made me and saved me for this. Listen, you were made and you were saved for the dream God puts in your heart. You, you were meant to do that. That's why it's so fulfilling. That's why it's a sin not to pursue this dream God has for you. That's why it's, it's wrong. And that's why it's so important. He goes, I know that I haven't yet reached my dream or my goal, but there's one thing that I always do. Well, that's important. Let's hear what he has to say. I'm not going to get folk all caught, caught up in the past. The past is past. Forgetting the past and straining towards what is ahead. God has a good future for you. It's the dream he has for you. He wants you to dream again. I keep my eyes focused on the dream so that I may one day win the prize that God has called me to receive through Christ in this in the life above. All of you who are spiritually mature should think the same way. He says, this is the test of spiritual maturity. Do you have a God-sized dream in your life? Are you moving towards that? Are you starting to try to walk through the open doors that God gives you? Spiritual maturity dictates that you do that. God says, I'm calling you all up. Now, here's your homework, okay? Here's your homework for this week. This week, I want you to get with the Lord. Maybe open up the Bible, read a couple verses, and, but then just start dreaming. Say, God, what are some dreams? And start putting, you don't have to show it to anybody. You know, just start putting some things down on paper. Your homework. Write the vision and make it plain on tablets. See, this is, if you don't have a tablet, this is your biblical reason to go get yourself a tablet. That he may run who reads it. God says, I want to give you that motivation in life. That you run after it. But he goes, you got to write it down. If you don't write it down, it's unclear. I write mine down. I review them at least once a month. I try to do it more than that. At least once a month, what are the dreams God's given me? That Because, I, I, you know what? They're important to me. But life comes at me like it comes at you. Hot and heavy, all things. And I can get sidetracked. I can lose focus. And so you write the vision down. That's your homework. Write the vision down. Let me pray for you. Would you bow your heads? Close your eyes right now. Heavenly Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you ignite our faith, our capacity to believe that you want to use us in the incredible ways you'd want to use us. Raise up an army of great dreamers here at Vineyard Church. Those watching online, God wants to just pour new, fresh dreams in your life. Forget the past. You go, yeah, but I kind of screwed up. Who cares? Forget what's going on in the past. Move forward in the future that you have set before you. The book of Joel, that prophet, said that God, in, the, in, the, in, this, in this generation, he says that he's going to pour out visions 
and dreams on, young, on the young and old, which means the middle too. God wants to give you a fresh vision, a fresh dream in your life. He is not finished with you. Would you pray this? Say, God, forgive me for small thinking. Would you say, God, give me a new hope in my heart, the capacity to dream again, dream big again. Maybe you've been burned. Maybe it's, you've got so much scar tissue and some pain there. God, I don't even know if I can do it. God, can, God wants you to do it. God, the, our generation needs you to do it. The church body is praying for you to do it. God gave you the capacity to dream. And without a dream, you will die. Some of you already know that to be true. And so I speak life. If you've never asked Christ into your life, I want to invite you. See, because that begins with a dream. A dream of having a life together with God where God's working with you. You have a relationship with him. You're connected to God. All dreams really are rooted in what God has, his dream for you. And Jesus came, Ephesians tells us that Jesus came because there was a barrier between us and God, and he came to wipe out and destroy that barrier. You go, how do I know if there's a barrier? Well, God feels a million miles away. And some of you, that's how it feels right now, that God is far from you. Would you let Jesus do what he came to do in your life? and wipe that barrier out. Say, God, today I want you in my life. I, wanna, I, w- I don't want anything in between us. And if that's you, you're saying, I w- I'm ready. I want to be close to God. Then I'm just going to invite you. It's not about joining the church here. I'm asking you, would you join Jesus and what he's done for you? If that's you, then I want you just to raise your hand right where you're at. Just say, include me in that prayer, Pastor. I'm ready to do that, okay? If you're online, you can let us know as well. There's a place for you to say, I want to I wanna, I wanna do that. Okay, you can put your hands down. Now just pray this. Say, God, today, today I want to follow you in your dream for my life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, wiping out that barrier for pain for the sins, even though you've never sinned, every sin I would ever do in my life so that there's no barrier. Would you say, God, today I want to come home to you. I want to have a close relationship with you. Help me to grow in my faith. Help me to have the dream you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know, I'm proud of you. If you uh, prayed, I know some of you raised your hand, you prayed with me. Some of you online prayed with me. Uh, I want to just tell you, your next step is to uh, get involved in growth track. If you're online, you're, w- let us know that you prayed with us and we'll, we'll help, help you in your journey as well. If you're here with us, your next step is growth track. Get involved. Say, hey, I want to, I want to, I want to start walking in that, in that direction. Okay. That's really important. Step one is today. We'll feed you. We'll watch your kids. Uh, it's right after the service. As you leave, you'll see it on the right. Hope to see you in there. Also, we have, um, uh, let us know if you have any prayer requests, if you committed your life to Christ, your connect card that's attached to your program, you can fill that out, put it in the box on your way out. And then here's some ways that you can give support. What we're doing here is, is God give, gave us a dream to reach the nations with the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's an honor and it's a privilege to do that. Well, would you stand with me? We're going to go ahead and close in a song where we just kind of lift up our voices and our hearts to the Lord. Let's do that. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives. Lord, the dream that you give us, just continue to 
to pour into our lives, ignite a fresh dream in each person. In Jesus' name, let's sing together.